What's going on, everybody? So I woke up this morning, man, to all kinds of headlines. And it's been an uh, interesting day on social media, so to say. Um, before I jump into the topic, remember, guys, as always, make sure that you like, make sure you share. And if it's your first time watching, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when every video is coming out. Hopefully everything sounds good. I'm sitting out here on my baby moon with my wife uh, on the balcony, so looking forward to my little one that's on the way. But anyway, I was, I was watching YouTube today, and I come across a video of Pastor Mark Driscoll getting kicked off of stage for rebuking a church publicly for having a male stripper perform. Now I looked a little bit, I haven't heard the other pastor's response or anything, so everything's still kind of fresh. Um, but I, I, I read into it and I heard there was some kind of men's conference and there was uh, some type of performance happening for the men and everything like that. But here's my thoughts, right? One of the things that come to my heart is Revelation 2.20, when Jesus is rebuking the church for tolerating uh, that prophetess Jezebel. And that's what Pastor Mark Driscoll did, was he rebuked publicly that Jezebel spirit that was in that church doing all that that was do, in the church doing all that mess and if you're going to have a male stripper there you are inviting Jezebel that also would make me question what's going on at the behind the scenes of the church if there's somebody in immorality is the pastor unaware because I hear this pastor is well known and he has people like Bill Johnson Todd White and people like that come to the church so uh, my question is is the pastor uh, compromised or is somebody within the church compromised, right? So when you see this stuff going on in a church and you know, you, you also see the types of people people are yoking themselves with and, and, and stuff like that, it has to make you question some stuff. So anyway, I, be, I believe personally because of that happening, there, there has to be some type of compromise. Remember, this is, this is a year of exposure. If you guys go look back at my word for this year, I said this would be a year that God started to expose things, right? And uh, we, we need to be just used to it happening. Don't be surprised of anything. But here's, here's the truth, though. In the midst of exposure, there's a remnant that will stand for truth that will not compromise and will call a spade a spade. You ever heard that saying, call a spade a spade so when you see something is wrong you say it's wrong now um, I usually give people the benefit of the doubt in the beginning but if I'm with you long enough and I start to see enough if I start to see compromise or I start to see something shady going on I'm gonna back off so was was Mark Driscoll right for rebuking the church publicly the man of God that was hosting the conference he came forth and he was like you know, he should have came to me in private. This is a private discussion. It was no need for him to do that. But here's the thing, though. It was a public display of unrighteousness, and Pastor Mark Driscoll had been invited to come preach at that church. So if he doesn't speak up, then it's like he is standing with the compromise, right? Um, so he had to speak up because he was on stage with that person. It's like this. If I'm invited somewhere... And there is known, there's a, there's a male stripper on stage before I come out, and I'm friends with that pastor. I'm either one, I'm not going on stage, or, either, or number two, if I do go on stage, I'm going to say I don't agree with what just happened. And, and we need to figure out why that just happened. And then I, if the pastor will allow me, I will proceed to preach the gospel and preach the truth. And then I will take a stand on the stage against sexual immorality because that's what's being invited in. And, and, you know, so, but obviously that pastor was like, no, Mark, you don't rebuke me here. You, you, you're going off the stage, right? Um, and here's another thing to think about, okay? You know, I these shades. I got these shades on because the sun's right in my face and my, my wife's in the room there, so I had to come out here. Um, there's men at a men's conference, and th you don't know what these men are struggling with. And in this day and age, there's so much 
corn on the internet that men see all kinds of things and if you know anything about that spirit of perversion it will twist it'll twist things in your life to to where you'll start to like things so for example there was probably a lot of men there statistically if you know church statistics stir, excuse me church statistics as a tongue twister you'll know that there is men there that are struggling with immorality so if they see this spirit come on stage and doing these things like putting a sword down his throat i mean and 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 climbing a pole up and down and all this stuff what do you think's happening to these men that have struggled, what kind of thoughts are being uh, thrown their way? Now, now what's happening is the men are being uh, castrated pretty much right there spiritually, and now we have a bunch of problems and struggles. Now, I heard some men left, some people were staying, some people were speaking against it. When Mark Driscoll got kicked off, it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good look, obviously, because of stuff that was going on. But what is going on in the church in America? Now, look, I'll tell you this, I've I've been in all kinds of circles, I've stood again with with different types of people, and you know, after you stand with people long enough, you have to stop standing with them when you find out certain things are going on. Even though you may not have receipts, you get enough information, you move out the way. I think this is a situation where hopefully, I, I don't know what happens with Mark Jeskel and this pastor, because like I said, they're both well known. Even Mark has a has a uh, past at Mars Hill Church. I think it's Mars Church or Mars Hill Church, where he had a lot of controversy going on there and a lot of. Uh, I forget exactly what was financial. I, I don't even remember the whole story behind what happened with Mark and that. So he has his own past. But this also shows that Mark has changed his heart and he's willing to, to stand up for what's right, uh, regardless of what his past looks like. We all have a past. Like I have a past. I have a past, a storied past myself. But just because I have a storied past doesn't mean that I'm not going to stand up and, and speak what's right. Just because I messed up at one time doesn't mean that I'm, I'm not going to repent eventually and come forward and, and start to speak truth and speak what's right. I mean, that's why we have stories like King David and Noah and, 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 and even Samson and these people, right, in the Bible, because it shows that even though people mess up, they can turn back around, repent, get back where they need to be and uh, start speaking the truth. So I think that I'm saying that this pastor doesn't have a chance or, you know, he can't repent or whatever. I'm not that type of guy. I'm a grace guy. I believe God will restore anybody. But there has to be an acknowledgement that that was wrong. I mean, just say it's wrong. Own it. Hey, my bad for letting this in the church. I would make a public, I would make a public uh, announcement that what that was was wrong. You know. So you know, as leaders in the church, we also have to speak up. So if we have a platform, if we're influential, like when we see these things, we need the people need to know that there's leaders out here that also stand on the side of that's not right. That's unrighteous. That's immoral. Not just keep our mouth shut and say, oh, God's going to handle it. God's going to be, everything's going to be okay. No, like, like I know most likely that there's, there's leaders even today that have all kinds of stuff going on that have big platforms and all that. All this stuff is going to come out, guys. In this season, don't be surprised at the, ex, at the exposure that comes forth. Don't be surprised who gets exposed, what gets exposed. The only thing you're supposed to do is pray for them. Pray for them in the midst of the exposure and then take on a Galatians 6-1 mentality. If they get to that place, that they will be restored gently. They will have church leaders come around them and lead them uh, to where they need to be. Okay? So, this is wild. I have no idea why this pastor of all people would have allowed this in the church, but this just shows you the spirit is running rampant in America, in the world today, that seducing Jezebelic spirit. And I'm going to tell you guys something. There is, <clears throat> excuse me, there's teachings out there that says that there's no Jezebel spirit, it's a spirit of bow. That's not right teaching. That's wrong teaching. And that'll get you to stop focusing on the Jezebel spirit that Jesus literally talks about. He talks about a prophetess named Jezebel. Okay, so there is a Jezebel spirit, guys, 100%. You know, I almost had my mindset change, and then that spirit starts to run havoc around. You need to make sure you don't tolerate Jezebel. By not believing there's a Jezebel, Jezebel spirit, you tolerate that spirit because you're not going to ever say, come out in the name of Jesus, you Jezebel spirit. Okay, so there is a Jezebel spirit. 
All right? If you've learned anything opposite, that's wrong teaching. I don't care who that man or woman of God is. That's a wrong teaching, guys. There is a Jezebel spirit, and there is a spirit of Baal that is a ruling principality over her. But when you've done deliverance, when you've done deliverance long enough, and I've been doing it since 2013. I know some people say they've done it longer, but that's fine. But I've, been, I've done thousands of deliverance. Let me tell you something. There is 100% a Jezebel spirit that enters into churches, enters into people, enters into uh, ministers, enters into wives, into husbands. That spirit is real. It's very real. And it's an end day spirit that is at work now. Even right now in politics. Listen, in politics, that spirit is running rampant. You know, if, if whatever spirit is ruling the nation, if it's not the Holy Spirit, another spirit is ruling the nation. You know how I know America's being ro ruled by that Jezebel spirit? Because our leader, supposedly, can say something and nobody respects it. That's called an Ahab leader. That means that Jezebel is behind Ahab. That means there's a Jezebel spirit behind the world leader running things right now. But anyway, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, uh, a whole nother discussion. But the Jezebel spirit is very real. And if you ever, listen, if you ever see a church that lets a male stripper in, if you ever see a church that allows strippers, period, or any, any type of person like that in, they're compromised. And they need to, you need to find out where the compromise is. Listen, because a, uh, a church has compromise in it, it doesn't necessarily mean the pastor is all the way compromised. It could also mean that there's somebody in leadership that is compromised that you may not know about. So there is, uh, there is always, when there's stuff like that going on, there's always compromise somewhere, okay? And listen, some people like saying now that wasn't a stripper. Trust me, they were doing stripper things. They were on a pole doing stuff, looking seductive, ripping a shirt off. Sorry, that's a stripper to me. Okay, you don't need all that in a, in a, in a, in a church. Uh, it's, it's just unnecessary. It's just unnecessary. So um, I know that we got people in the chat that are baby, babies and they don't understand things and stuff like that. No, I'm not saying don't let sinners in. We let sinners in, but we don't let sinners perform in the pulpit so other people can see it and get seduced by them. <laughs> Come on, guys. Do better. Y'all are trying to trip me up, but I got to an answer for them trip-ups. You ain't going to trip me up on that. We can do better than that. Guys, do me a favor. If you're just jumping in, go up and hit that, those buttons and hit that like button so we can get more eyes on this. But, guys, we can't be in compromised position. We can't stand uh, for compromise. We can't stand for unrighteousness. We need to call a spade a spade. We need to make sure that that Jesus is glorified in all things that we do. It says, do all things unto the Lord, Jesus Christ. All right? Do all things as unto Jesus. Do all things as unto the Lord, Jesus Christ. So when we do things, we do things that glorify Him. We don't, we don't, we don't become like the world to win the world. And that's another seducing, twisted thing. That's not another seducing, twisted thing, is that we become like the world to win the world. That isn't how things work, guys. We, we, we change the atmosphere. The world doesn't change us. We change the world with the anointing that is upon our life. This is the anointing. In Isaiah, it says the anointing breaks the yoke of bondage. When you walk into a room, do you carry the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage on other people? Do you, does it break the yoke of bondage in an atmosphere? So do you carry the yoke-breaking anointing is the question. So that, th these are things that we need to like really ask ourselves. And here's another thing. I think the church is getting jelly-backed in some ways because we're scared of offending people. But remember, the gospel is offensive to those who are, are perishing. Truth hurts people that are going to hell. You understand? Truth sets people free, though, that, that want to hear it. So if you never tell the truth then people will go to hell because the truth is the only thing they can set free. And Jesus is the way, the truth, truth, and the life. And, and nobody will get to the Father but by Him. So if you don't tell the truth, you don't present Jesus. And I'm not saying you have to come hard-nosed. I'm not saying you have to come and condemn people and beat them up and, and make them feel some type of way. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that we should come and we should, uh, we should preach, the, the, preach conviction with love. You know what I mean? So you're coming with the right intentions, with the right heart. 
you're not coming feeling joyful because you're coming being, you can be self-righteous in your exposure too. You see what I'm saying? So don't be self-righteous in your exposure. But what part Pastor Mark Driscoll did, I mean, yeah, I mean, why wouldn't he do that? I don't blame him. And then he was respectful. They told him to get off stage. He said, okay. He got off stage, but he said his part. And he was letting them know that that Jezebel spirit will not be tolerated when he's around. And it needs to be that way with all of us. Okay? I see some of you saying pray and prophesy. Y'all just hang on, guys. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm teaching right now. This is, a, this is a teaching life. But I'll, I may pray if the Lord allows. Amen? Meaning and, and prophesy or whatever. But I wanted to come on here and react to this. And I just wanted to share my thoughts. And this is a call also to all leaders, guys. This is a call to all leaders to, to speak the truth in the midst of a perverse and dying people. People are dying every day and they need to hear the truth. If they don't hear the truth, it says if there is not a preacher, they will preach the truth. How will they hear? If there's no preacher, how will they hear the gospel, right? There's a lot of compromise out there. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of what I call celebrity preachers. Now, what do I mean? They, they get near celebrities, but the celebrities never change because they want to be a celebrity themselves. If, the way I look at it, if you're a true believer in Jesus Christ and you get next to celebrities or influential people, th there should be a change eventually. Daniel got next to... Uh, uh, Dan yeah, Daniel was next to uh, Pharaoh, but Joseph got next to Pharaoh. These people got favor in the, in the, in, in the courts of Pharaoh, right? And what happened? Because they were in a leader position in an, un, in an unrighteous man's palace, the, the whole country was affected in a way that things turned back to righteousness and favor came back up on them. So, you know, there's, the way to see if a man of God is truly walking in the right anointing and truly walking in what they're supposed to be walking in isn't the fact that they can be friends with celebrities. It's the fact that the celebrity is changing and also proclaiming Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. All right? I mean, think about this, guys. Anybody that doesn't know Jesus will go to hell. Okay? Anybody that does not accept that free gift of salvation. I hope more people make it to heaven than go to hell. That's my hope, but that's because I got a, a big heart and I have a lot of love in my heart for people. I want to see more people in heaven than I do see in hell. I, do I know that as an absolute fact? I don't know that, but that's a hope, right? That should be every person's hope. Every person's hope should be that all people can make heaven, but they have to repent and they have to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. If they do not do that, then they won't make it to heaven. they got to be able to say Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and show the fruit of their salvation. I'm not talking about making a mistake. I'm talking about you show the fruit of your salvation. You show that your life lived is one where you've given yourself to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So, are, are the men and women of God in the world today? You watch a lot of men and women of God. There's a lot of, let, me, let me tell you this. There's a lot of men and women of God who can prophesy. There's a lot of men and women of God who can heal the sick. There's a lot of men and women of God that can cast out demons. But ask yourself this. When they're doing it for those people, what is the true result of what they are doing? Are disciples being made? Are presidents changing? Are leaders changing? Are nations changing? Are, are store managers changing? Are people working in whatever capacity? Are they changing? So when people are these, these people that are doing these supernatural works and things, including myself, when we get really close to people, are people really ex experiencing the, the, the life-changing power of God, are they experiencing something that is produced from another place? So these are things that we have to ask ourselves too, right? I know if anybody that is, uh, that is famous or a world leader gets next to me, I'm going to tell them the truth no matter what. I'm going to tell them all the same. Jesus Christ saves, period. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You can't get there by your own good works. You can't get there by... Believing in anything else, He is the only door that you can get through. Amen? So we're in a time, guys, where we cannot yoke ourselves to unrighteousness. The times, look, the times are short, guys. Time is short upon this earth. Every day is a day closer. Every day is a day closer to Jesus Christ's return. I mean, even, even I did a video earlier on my podcast channel. I have a podcast channel called That Supernatural Talk where I do reaction videos too. So if you guys aren't subscribed to that, you can subscribe to that. But um, I did one on Mar, Mari Emanuel, who got stabbed this morning. If I noticed in the video, though, 
when the man went to stab him, it didn't look like the knife opened at first. So, I mean, God is with Marmari Emmanuel, and I stand with him, and I stand with the truth. And that's another thing. He's a man who speaks the truth, and he carries the love of God. Tremendously, tremendously carries the love of God. So I woke up to seeing that, and I also woke up to seeing what happened with Pastor Mark Driscoll. So we definitely, guys, we definitely, definitely, definitely in this hour need to stand for what's right. We need to stand for what's right, and we need to stand for truth. We need to stand for holiness. We need to stand for purity. We need to stand for righteousness. And we got to make sure that we're yoked to the right spirit, and we have the right intentions and the right agenda. And that's that people know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So we need to stay prayed up. But anyway, guys, um, what I'm, what I'm going to do right now, uh, now that I've talked a little bit, I'll pray for a few of you guys. And... Uh, and, and see what the Lord has to say. But here's one thing that I'll say, guys, before, before I get into doing anything else. I can only stay on here for a little while. I can't stay on too long. Is just from hearing what I said just now, you already know where my heart is towards, towards immorality, towards unrighteousness, towards impurity. If you need to make those changes, guys, there isn't a prophetic word you need to hear that. Like, for example, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're watching corn stop watching it and ask the lord to deliver you if you're if you're doing drugs obviously you need to stop and you need to ask the holy spirit to help you heal your heart so that you don't go back in to do it so there's some things you know you you don't you don't need to keep looking for this and, and that the word is very like the the word is very much there and the prophetic word is believe in the lord jesus christ repent he will come to you in His power through His Holy Spirit and He will set you free. It's pretty simple. But if you don't truly repent from your heart and you know you still have a love for that sin, then you're going to keep it. You're going to keep that little thing as your best friend. So, so whatever it is, guys, like a lot of y'all want me to pray for you, prophesy, heal, heal the sick, all this stuff but in the name of Jesus Christ. But some of it is simple truth and, and, and simple accountability. Some of you guys take accountability for it, man. You know, stop, stop looking for like... You know, Lord, I'll stop when your power touches me. No, the day you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, his power touched you and saved you and is sanctifying you. And some of the stuff the Lord is saying, stop, just stop, fall out of love with sin. You have to fall out of love with it, guys. The power of God is always available to anybody that will, uh, that will call on, on Jesus, all right? I love what I do. I do. I love what I do. I love helping people. I love, I love um, uh, setting people free, but, but guys, my hope is that you guys will continue in a relationship with Jesus. Because let's say I pray for you, a prophetic word comes forth, healing comes forth, deliverance comes forth, and all you've been looking at is me as the source of your power, uh, as the source of the power that's changing you, you're going to end up getting upset. And you're going to say Daniel Adams is false or Daniel Adams is this, when the reality is you didn't take a step in the way that you needed to go. I'm just one point of contact to the bigger point of contact. His name is Jesus Christ. So you touch me, I'm going to lead you straight to the source that I get my power from, and it's Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right? And no, I can't heal nobody, but Jesus through me can heal anybody. I can heal, I can heal no one, but Jesus can heal you through me. He can do it. He can do it through any believer that is available and is ready, ready okay? Through anybody. I can... Now, some people need to learn how to prophesy, obviously, because they don't understand it. They don't know it. But anybody can prophesy. Anybody can cast out demons. Anybody can heal the sick. I know there's a different teaching in the Catholic Church, but that's not true. All, all people are saints. The moment they're born again, you become a saint. You don't have to go get knighted into sainthood or whatever. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're a saint. You can exercise demons from people through the name of Jesus Christ, through the power and authority of Jesus Christ. But anyway, I raise up that church that was uh, John Lindell, I think, is the pastor of the church there in that church. I raise that church up, and Lord, I pray your righteousness, your holiness, and, and, and the standard of truth will be raised in that church again. And wherever the error is, wherever the compromise is, may it be exposed for your glory. And Lord Jesus Christ, may it be a, uh, an example of the fear of the Lord, that, that we need to stay firm on truth so that compromise doesn't come in and mess us up. Lord, no, not, no one is perfect, but Father, with what you have given us, with the word you have given us, we can sustain truth and we can walk forward with your spirit to see people saved, sanctified into your glory so that they can tell your story. So Lord, we just thank you so much. We love you and we raise them up and we say, Lord, have your way. May your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. So I like to, you know, 
I like to pr obviously pray uh, for situations and stuff. But anyway, yeah, I mean, if you want to join the military, <coughs> excuse me, join the military, jump in. If that's what the Lord's will is. All right, guys, I'll take a few prayer requests here. Pray for you guys. I pray your, your husband be saved, Shantae. May he know the Lord Jesus Christ. Then may he be saved for the Lord's glory. You found a, a home in the mountain? I mean, can you do the Lord's work in the mountain? Is it a place that you feel you can raise your family? Then that's the will of the Lord. Amen. El Fuego, righteousness is your portion, my friend. Righteousness is a portion. And you are a man of God. I believe you're a man of God. I hope you're a man of God. That's what I'm feeling in my spirit. That will go forth with righteousness in your mouth, and many people will come to know Jesus Christ. You are an unrighteous slayer. What does that mean? You're going to take the unrighteousness from people, and you're going to impart the righteousness so that the kingdom of God can be advanced in people's life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, may you have ears to hear the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ah, the nations are on here. God bless you all. Hey, do me a big favor, guys, so that more people can hear what I said in the beginning of this video, go hit those three dots and hit that like button for me, okay? Amen. You receive from Thailand. Receive it in Jesus' name. Yes, Teresa, I command that spirit of infirmity to, 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 to release you and release your generations. In the mighty name of Jesus, may you be blessed, blessed, blessed up to a thousand generations. Amen. Truth sounds crazy in a world full of lies that live for Jesus Christ. And this misses you, Daniel. I would like your knowledge for putting God first in my business. Yes, Quinn. Um, all you have to do when it comes to putting God first in your business, make sure you start your business day or whatever. Everything you do with business, start it with the Lord, meaning make Him the beginning point of everything done business-wise. If you will have the Lord in everything, if you will give Him all the glory for every bit of success and you will point people to him, towards Him even within your business, then the Lord will continue to bless your business, grow it, and you will thrive and you will go from glory to glory and faith to faith. Amen. Pray I may have breakthrough in hearing the Lord's voice and freedom. Yes, Alberto, I pray that you will have breakthrough in hearing the voice of the Lord and every spirit of confusion that has come through brokenness in your life, I command it to be broken. Any witchcraft attack against you, I command it to be broken off your life. Welcome to the people that are joining as members. God bless you. Prayers for our finances and business for the Lord to continue. Yes, may the Lord continue to provide for your husband and you and your business, Tanya, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. Dexter, may your whole body be healed. I feel like it's attached to your spine. The reason you're dealing with a lot of the stuff in your body is something with the spine. I pray right now every issue within your spine be completely healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. May you grow in your relationship with the Lord, Reuben. Jesus' name. Ah, hola, como estas? From Puerto Rico. Ken, may you be delivered, my friend. Amen. Amen, El Fuego. God bless you. Mark, what direction are you looking for breakthrough in, my friend? Yeah, you can, if you dreamt about the rapture, yeah, I'll listen to it. Yes, we are alive. <coughs> Doors, Leslie Charles. Prayer for doors to open that I may enter into my career and serve God in it. Yeah, Leslie, I believe, I believe the Lord is showing me that you have a strong entrepreneurial call on your life. You will step into a realm of business that will be amazing. You will be in marketplace ministry, and many people will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ through your life. Amen? Amen. How do we properly educate ourselves? The last thing I want to is confuse people. Blind can't lead the blind. How do I know I'm when I'm ready? I'm ready in my heart. But people, I don't have enough answers. You continue to grow in the word. Don't put such a heavy burden on you and give people what you know. You can only speak what you know. So if, you know, the Lord has given you wisdom and revelation on something and you come across somebody, you just, you just help them out with what, the God, what God has given you. You see? That's all. You can only help people with what you have. Amen. May the Lord bless your more orphanage, Lily. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Raul, may you meet a woman that is worthy of 
may you, what did I say? He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain a favor from the Lord. May you obtain a favor from the Lord for fi finding your kingdom spouse. And I saw somebody else. Look, a lot of you have marriage, marriage wants and needs, but make sure that the Lord is clearing your heart and setting the foundation for a marriage so that you don't get into something that is not, uh, that you're not ready for. And then it ends up broken down the road. So may the Lord sustain you all who want a proper marriage in Jesus name. Amen. Hope is by the grace of God. Thank you, Rebbe. May the Lord bless your seed. And all the way you get breakthrough in all aspects of life is you put the Lord first. It's a very simple answer, guys. You put the Lord in all things. Amen. In all things that you do. No request. God bless you. You prophesy. Oh, Katie, good to see you, my friend. Yes, I remember that. May the Lord have, our way, have his way. Mario, you will win your claim if the Lord will get glory in it. If it's a lot of flesh involved, no. But if the Lord gets glory in it, yes. If I get something. England is funny because when you ask me that, now I'm only going to say what I saw by the Spirit of the Lord. I went into a vision when I saw you say that, and I saw people packing stuff in a bag. It was like people were in your house, and I saw them packing stuff in a bag. I think what the Lord is showing me is you've allowed people into your realm of prophecy that should not be there, and they're actually stealing from you. So I feel like the Lord is saying, uh, make sure your surroundings are right, because there's people around you that are actually hindering some, some things of the Lord in your life. So ask the Lord that all these people that are stealing and to be exposed around your life so that you can uh, move forward and do what you need to do in the kingdom and you can also prosper in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. For me to help get rid of these addictions, yes, game on grid. I pray right now every spirit of addiction be broken off your life. And I pray right now that the Lord Jesus Christ will give you the grace that is needed to do so in Jesus' name. Fall in love with Jesus, can real change. I keep sinning and I'm tired. Want to be a life light for my wife and kids. You know, you're probably trying to figure a lot out in your own strength. Ask the Lord to give you understanding and wisdom. Remember, say, say, Jesus, you have the same mind that you have. That let that mind be in me and help me with wisdom where I may be lacking in some areas and some understanding. Lord, I need your knowledge. I take all these thoughts captive that are trying to exalt themselves above you, and I take them into your captivity. And I put them into your submission, Lord, in Jesus' name. Pray for conviction of the Holy Spirit. Cause me to draw all things hidden in my walk with Jesus. And yes, I pray, Tay, that you will fully surrender yourself completely by God's love and grace. Because you can only do it by God's love and grace. Like, have no purpose. I feel like I can't repent the way I want to. Identify with Paul when he says, So, Isaac, that is a man who is under the law. That's a man that's trying to fulfill things in his own righteousness and in his own strength. You can't do it. You need to say, Lord, I give up and I need your grace to be able to walk righteously before you because I can't do this myself. I need your help. If you do that and you accept that you're in the dispensation of grace, God's grace will sustain you and move you forward the way that he needs you to move forward. Amen. I think I already said a, a word to you, my friend. I will pray for the Lord and He will guide me. Can you please? Didn't didn't I Ryle? I, I thought I, I thought I did that also. Lo, Raul, you will be a person, because I think I prophesied to you a little bit ago, but you will be a person that will uh, restore things that were lost. You'll be a person who restores things that were lost. The Lord is going to give you a special grace to go up to people and give them a word of knowledge about things that have been taken from them. And because of the word of knowledge that will come, they will start to have breakthrough and victory where the Lord's going to restore what the enemy stole from them. In Jesus' name. Thank you for that number of grace, that number five, my friend. Amen. To a ministry as I move to Dallas, I need to lead it. Yes, there is a... Uh, you said there's a revival in Dallas. Yes. May the Lord give you the wisdom to go where you need to go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just make sure you feel in your heart, Katie, that it's what the Lord wants you to do. Not only what some person that prophesies, but let the prophetic word be confirmation in your heart. I pray that your mother will be healed, Karima, and all intrusive thoughts be broken in Jesus' name. Guys, I see we got over 675, almost 700 watching. 
If all of you can go up right now and hit those three dots and then go hit that like button, it'll help us to push this video stronger into the algorithm. You can see where I'll be preaching by going to the supernaturallife.org. I'm on my baby moon right now, guys. <laughs> want to hear more from Holy Spirit? What direction to go spiritually? If you want to hear more from God, get in the secret place, pray to Him, have relationship, read the Word, and worship. You will hear His voice more. Remember, God's voice sounds like His Word. Amen? Pray for Jeremy and Kelly to be saved. And Yes, I come into agreement with that revelation. May the Lord uh, save Jeremy Kelly and that their relationship be restored to their father. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lakeithia. May the Lord bless you. Brian, I pray right now, Brain, I pray right now every spirit of rejection that came in through family hurt, rejection, whatever it may be, be broken off your life right now. In Jesus' name. The Warriors fast? I think so. <clears throat> I saw I just saw a vision of somebody that's beating their chest and I heard asked the Lord, why are they beating their chest? And I feel like the Lord is saying you you're, you're feeling your heart beats really strong and um, uh, you, you've put a lot of pressure on yourself. So your heart has been feeling very grieved and has caused your heart to beat very, very, very strong. You're carrying unnecessary burdens. If this word is for you, I'm going to prophesy to you now as you receive this word and as you, 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 you cast the burden unto the Lord, the Lord is going to set you free and your heart's going to be restored. So, Father, I thank you for this person. I pray their heart to be completely restored right now as they are releasing this burden to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray your son Christopher will come to know the Lord and become a mighty evangelist in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mark, I pray that the Lord will bless you so you can help your family by his grace. Amen. Come on, somebody. I pray your husband be set free from that alcohol addiction. Guys, if you're in Europe, next Monday I'm headed your way. I'll be in Netherlands, I'll be in Germany, no, Netherlands, Sweden, Germany, Ireland, and UK. If you guys want to be a part of those revivals that I'm going to be at overseas, you can go to the supernaturallife.org and uh, become a part of that revival and see what the Lord has for you. So if you're in, in any of those nations, um, by all means, come on out, okay? I pray your husband be blessed, Diane, and I pray he be healed in all pain, leave his body and his heart. In Jesus' name, God use you to locate me and my family. Amen, Katie. Amen. By God's, by God's grace. It's all by His grace. Perfect. Do not give up. Amen. Thank you guys in the chat that are helping these people out. I, I pray your baby girl, I her, pray her lungs to open now, and she have no issues breathing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hopefully soon. Guys, in September, I'll be in Australia. So, But anyway, look, I'm going to come back uh, one day this week and do another uh, just straight up prayer stream, prophecy, healing, deliverance, whatever the Lord wants to do. I'll do another dream interpretation live uh, also uh, pretty soon. But guys, I can't stay on here too long because I got, well, I got to get off now actually because I have a dinner re reservation with my wife. But look, I pray blessings over you guys. I pray any healing needs, may the Lord heal you. Any deliverance needs, may the Lord deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus. Any breakthrough that you need, may you receive it. And may you receive the promises of God. There's thousands of them for you. May you receive and walk in them all as you pursue Him. Seek first the kingdom and all its righteousness, Matthew 6.33, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek the Lord, you will find Him. And when you find Him, the blessings of the Lord will be upon you. You find Him by adoring him amen you adore him his presence shows up and everything changes we he is worthy of it all all right guys god bless you you can go to the supernaturallife.org if you have any any questions about anything if it's your first time watching make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell also don't forget to hit that like button as you're watching so that this can go out and uh, more people can get the message of truth that is jesus amen all right guys god bless you for now it's finished but we will be back see you soon